Hey guys, Sean here and welcome to the F1 Word. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, it was confirmed earlier this week that the 2020 Canadian Grand Prix has been postponed and that means, as things stand at time of recording, the earliest start point for this season is the French Grand Prix on June the 28th. Well, across the weekend of June 26th to 28th anyway. But that wasn't the only thing we'd heard from Formula One this week. In an interview with Sky Sports, Ross Braun has shed some light on the planning going on behind the scenes as well as when we could see the season start and how many races we could get. Long story short, it could be either not many at all or an insanely packed schedule that could run into next year. So in this video, I'm going to go over that interview and then give my thoughts on when I think the season might realistically start, if at all. First off then, and what is the biggest issue right now according to Ross Braun? Well, it will come as very little surprise to hear that it's travel. I know, shock horror, specifically the travel of the teams of personnel to and from circuits around the world. However, Ross does argue that should F1 decide to start the season, they would be able to keep themselves pretty well contained. He also believes that it is likely the season would start in Europe rather than, for argument's sake, a rescheduled, let's say, Chinese Grand Prix. But on the point of holding a safe event, he said, our view is probably a European start will be favourable and that could even be a closed event. We could have a very enclosed environment where teams come in on charters, we channel them into the circuit, we make sure everyone is tested, cleared and that there is no risk to anyone. Once again there, it's been made clear that the priority of Formula One is that nobody is put at risk. So right now then, racing behind closed doors is also on the cards, but I don't think too many of you are going to be very surprised to hear that one. I've got to say, it would be a shame to see racing go ahead without the fans at the circuit, because ultimately what is sport without the fans? But you can completely understand why that may need to be necessary at the moment. And do you know what? Quite frankly, racing with no fans is better than no racing whatsoever, which is obviously the point we're at at the moment. And that was very much something that Ross Braun wanted to put across as well. I mean, the start of the season feels like a very long way off at the moment, doesn't it? And you could argue, as of right now, it feels like there is no way this season can start in 2020. Incredibly, though, Ross Braun actually thinks that we could still see 18 to 19 races this year, but only if the season starts in July. That's where F1 seems to be aiming at the moment, but how realistic is that, really? Something else he did stress, actually, in that interview was the importance of maintaining the start of the season. Basically, what he's saying is there is no point in starting the season with one race and then having to wait a month or two for a second Grand Prix. And I think many of us would agree with that. The season has got to have some kind of flow to it once it gets started. And a stop-start season is unlikely to engage people and keep them coming back. And that could in itself have a knock-on effect with sponsors. Are sponsors going to want to pay out if people aren't coming back and watching the sport? I mean, don't get me wrong, I still watch if we had a race today and then nothing again for six months. And I'm sure there are a lot of people watching this video that would do the same. That's just who I am. I'm an F1 fan. I'll always watch it, no matter what. But the fact of the matter is, not everybody will. What needs to happen is when the season starts, we need to see at least one race every other weekend. Although it sounds as though it is going to be far more intense than that. But I'll get onto that one in just a moment. There is, I guess you could call it a cutoff point or the latest the season can start before it becomes impossible to run, or at least that's how I read it anyway. And that is apparently somewhere around the end of October. However, he didn't rule out the idea of running the season into January 2021. That will be very interesting. I'm going to read his quote though, once again from Ross Braun, obviously, but he says, eight races is the minimum we can have for a world championship. We could achieve eight races by starting in October, so if you wanted a drop-dead point, it would be October. But then there is always the possibility we could run into next year. That's being explored. Can we stray into January to finish the season? There are all sorts of complications, as you can imagine, with that. If we were able to start at the beginning of July, we could do a 19-race season. It would be tough three races on, one weekend off, three races on, one weekend off, we have looked at all the logistics and we think we can hold an 18 to 19 race season if we can get started at the beginning of July. The choice is between those two numbers. And the numbers I think he's referring to there are either eight races for the minimum needed for a world championship or 19 races. And once again, by the way, the idea of two day race weekends was put forward as a possibility, something Ross has discussed before, of course. But this time he mentioned China and said that it would, among others, likely have to be a two-day event so that Formula One could make the logistics work. I will say as well, the full interview is linked below. I know I'm going to be going over quite a bit of it in this video, but in my opinion anyway, it's still well worth a read. 
It's interesting as well that he talks about the possible complications of running the season into January next year. And when you sit and think about it, it's not as straightforward as just let's keep going until this season is done. There are a lot of drivers out of contract at the end of the season, including the likes of Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. So there would need to be some sort of temporary contract extension put in place for drivers who have a deal expiring. I mean, that being said, it sounds simple enough, doesn't it? You know, hey, Seb, can you stay until the end of January, mate? We could really do with your help. But things are just rarely that easy when it comes to contract talk, especially in Formula One. And what about power units as well? McLaren's deal with Renault expires at the end of the year, and they are still set to take Mercedes units next year, something they are pushing on with despite the chassis freeze. Will they be able to extend their deal with Renault into 2021? Or would they still have to cram a Mercedes power unit into the back of that car on, say, January 1st, for argument's sake? Look, you would like to think that drivers, teams, and manufacturers would show some sort of flexibility, but this is F1 we are talking about, and it can get very political and, let's be honest, very bitchy very quickly. And all of that doesn't include things like sponsors. And that's also why I think it would be difficult to make a super season work. Not impossible, but difficult. If you're wondering what a super season is, it would essentially see the season start at the earliest point it is safe to do so in 2020 and then run until the end of what would have been the 2021 season, so probably Abu Dhabi in November. And with the freeze on things like chassis and all of that, it's not actually a bad idea at all. It would be interesting to see how that works out, for me anyway. However, once again, contracts are going to make that difficult. Teams would probably want to commit to a driver lineup from the start of this season until the end of 2021, which would mean extending contracts for those set to expire at the end of 2020, or perhaps even end them early to bring someone in who is committed to run until the end of 2021. Now, there is obviously nothing in the rules that states a team must use the same two drivers for a full season. Look at Taros and Red Bull, for God's sake. So there is also absolutely no reason why, let's say, Daniel Ricciardo couldn't go on to leave Renault mid-super season. But you would like to think that Renault would want to make sure that they had a lineup sorted for a full season. And also, a driver like Lewis Hamilton is going to want to go out there and fight for the title. So he would probably have to sign up to stay at Merck until the end of 2021, which, let's be honest, he's probably going to do anyway. But his hand would be forced in a way. Does that make sense? Probably not. But anyway... The fact of the matter is, it could all get very messy very quickly. So obviously, the easiest thing for F1 is to get the 2020 season started and finished by the end of December. But that could well be a very tall order. It's all going to come down to, obviously, that start point. Right then, what do I think about F1 in 2020? Well, first of all, I have to say this. The truth is, nobody knows right now. Even Formula One will be guessing to a point and I can only imagine the stress going on behind the scenes as things chop and change almost every day. So do you know what? If they don't know, I don't know. None of us do. And once again, the health and safety of everyone involved in the sport and the global community must be the priority. That cannot be stressed enough. However, I have pretty consistently said that I don't see any racing happening this side of what would have been the summer break. We've seen other motorsports series push things back to September, and so I wouldn't be at all surprised to see F1 do the same. But if I were you, I wouldn't expect any announcements anytime soon. I think it's just going to be a case of race X is postponed, the season now starts at race Y, before we get race Y is postponed, the season now starts at race Z, and so on and so forth. Essentially until we are at a point where something can go ahead. Personally, I think a July start is very ambitious, and I just can't see it happening. I would love it to, but I just don't see the worldwide situation changing drastically enough in a space of, what, three months to enable a sport like F1 to get going. September, maybe late August seems a far more likely bet. Equally though, I probably wouldn't be surprised if we get to October and they just call the whole season off. Again, they won't make that call until they absolutely have to. I fully expect that F1 will keep trying until running a world championship becomes impossible. So we could see an eight race season, but the second that becomes impossible and we drop to a maximum of, let's say, seven races, they'll definitely call it off. If they can't do a championship season, they're not going to go racing. And I think that's what Ross Braun was getting at when he said between those two numbers, eight races or 19 races, but anything less than eight and they won't bother. And I'll just throw this in there as well. Even with the best will in the world, I cannot see a 19 race season happening. For the millionth time in the last few weeks, I'd love it to. I am missing F1 so much as I'm sure many of you are too. But that just sounds like a logistical nightmare. Assuming they get the season started in July, 19 races in six months, as I said earlier, sounds absolutely insane. Yeah, as fans it would be epic, wall-to-wall motorsport for six months, bring it on. But it would be a huge strain on the teams and that's regardless of their budget or the number of personnel they've got employed. 
I get the point that Jean Todd was making a few weeks back about how F1 personnel should feel privileged to work in Formula 1, but at the same time, there's still a human element to all of this. And yeah, fine, they've not been racing since last November, but that's still a lot of stuff to cram into a very short space of time. And it is still a lot to ask of people as well. Like I say, it's about remembering that human element. Behind those helmets in the pit lane, there are real people with real lives and real families. Such a difficult balance for F1 to try and strike. Then again, trying not to make too much light of the situation, but after multiple weeks and months locked indoors with their family, some of those team personnel might be quite relieved to get away from their families for six months. Have a break. I'm only joking. I'm sure that's not the case. I mean, as I've already said, I don't think the season's going to start in July anyway, so it's kind of an irrelevant point. But let's say for argument's sake that it did start in July. I think 19 is ambitious. I think Chase Carey was about right when he said somewhere around 15 to maximum 18, but even that might be a bit much. 15 seemed like a nice number, maybe just me. I am trying to stay optimistic. I might not sound like it, but I am. And I am actually still confident that we will see some racing later this year, albeit I've got to admit, I'm far less confident now than I was a few weeks back. If I were to put a date on it right now, I think the season will start in September at the earliest and probably at a purpose-built track as well. The logistics around getting a street track set up or moving the dates for that race, let's say Singapore for example, are far more complicated than rocking up at a track like Spa. So I think once the season gets going, again, if it does, the first few races are more likely going to be at purpose-built tracks. So you might get Spa, for example, or Paul Ricard, that kind of thing. I think you get what I'm getting at with that. And do you know what, actually? It would be nice to have the 70th season start at Silverstone, because that's where F1 started in the first place. But if Silverstone can't happen and it can't be the season opener, I'd quite happily take Spa as a starting point in September. But what do you guys think? Do you think F1 will get going in July? Are you as optimistic as Ross Braun is? And if not, when do you think we will get some racing or are you expecting this season to be called off completely? You can let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. That is it though for this video. I'll be back soon with more content as ever. But in the meantime, and if you are interested, you can now follow me over on Twitch. We did a test stream last night and those who tuned in really did seem to enjoy the change of pace. It's not an F1 specific channel. So if you're not interested, I totally understand. But for those of you who are interested, you can follow me by clicking the link in the description down below. And that is also where you'll find the links to all of my other social media channels. But as ever, thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye-bye.